Hey folks, your OS Reviews. You're watching a closer comparison between the Asha operating system and Migo. So Asha draws heavy inspiration from Migo because it's actually headed by the same uh, developer that worked on Migo, which is why you see su such similarity. And, and that's a really good thing because Migo is critically acclaimed for being a very intuitive UI that's great for multitasking with its uh, gestures. It just makes it simple to use and eliminates the need for a ton of hardware keys and controls, which were common back in the day when this N9 was first released. So both of these phones actually do have tap to unlock or double tap to unlock. So you see that I can double tap on it and this actually has to be set up in the settings, but the same thing can be said. I double tap on the screen to wake it up and effectively get to this uh, unlock screen that displays my clock as well as notifications and when I'm ready I can swipe from any direction on the screen really to unlock it and uh, be greeted to this main UI page. Um, on the Asha OS there's one additional trick. I can swipe up from the top from the bottom here to have access to specifically the camera application, uh, which is kind of nifty and interesting. I can then swipe from left to right to access the camcorder, the camera, and my last taken image. On the N9, uh, you can actually swipe up to unlock this, the screen, but there's no additional um, quick launch shortcut to that camera page. So that's one extra optimization that uh, you find on the Asha OS, since the Asha, of course, came out at a later date. Both of the devices do have notification shades that I can technically drag down and uh, have access to more content uh, in terms of my Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, connectivity settings, as well as my profile settings and ringtone settings. So those are things that you'll find on both. Um, on the N9, it's a bit more complicated with how it's pages or home screen pages are set up. There's this main page of applications just like you see on the Asha OS over here on the left, but uh, on the Asha OS if I slide to the left or to the right there's just one other screen which is your quick view screen that consolidates all your previously open applications as well as your tasks and appointments into this one page that I can quickly go through and then open up you know, apps that I've had previously open. Whereas on the N9, there's the same thing. Um, there's this multitasking screen that I can use to look at my previously open apps. So they're still technically running in the background. I can tap on it once to just launch right back into it. Um, but there's a separate screen for more notifications such as weather, as well as the details like memos and calendar appointments. So it's uh, separated into these two pages as opposed to everything into this one vertically scrolling page. Maybe Asha did this because the uh, actual CPU and hardware on Asha OS devices are not as powerful actually as the N9 since it's really meant as a budget-oriented option. So you have the limited RAM and not as fast as the CPU, so they had to make things a bit more simple in terms of animation so that it would run. Now, Asha OS devices, regardless if it's 501 or 502 or the 500, actually comes with uh, one additional hardware key. That's the N9, as you can see here, is a bit more sleek and doesn't even have that button. But this is a back key, and it's kind of useful, but uh, on the N9, everything is just gesture-based. So, for instance, if I tap on something like settings and I go into Wi-Fi, if I want to go back into the main settings drawer, I would tap on this back key once. And obviously, if I want to exit out of this app completely, I can swipe anywhere from the left or the right edges of the display to get out of that. On the N9, for instance, if I also tap onto the settings page, and if I tap on Bluetooth, instead of uh, swiping all the way uh, or exiting out of this app you know, in the same fashion from the left or the right, there is a software key on the bottom here that takes me back one page into the previous page. So a little bit different, but a very similar in concept. And again, I can exit out of this by swiping anywhere I want, and it would show up onto the previously opened programs list, just like with on Asha OS. So very similar in that sense. If I take a quick look at the camera here, um, you can see that this one is a more of a traditional camera app with the Omigo operating system in the sense that you have access to your camera shutter controls as well as resolution controls directly. You can also have your zoom controls by pinch to zoom gestures, but otherwise you can't actually swap to the camcorder just by swiping left or right through the page. There's uh, dedicated controls down below here. So again, a little bit different with the Asha OS that has a bit more continued uh, gesture support that they worked on post and nine. Otherwise, there's a lot of similarities with some of the more utility-based apps that you'll find on both platforms and OSs. So an example would be in the clock or alarms page, where you can see that the way that the, the apps are uh, set up, as well as how they look, uh, draws 
a ton of parallel between both uh, operating systems. You can see that the same kind of design language is used here with the curved edges as well as how the clocks are very symbolic and uh, represented in this futuristic fashion. It's very elegant and if I want to set up an alarm I can tap on this plus key here and then go down here and take a closer look at that. If I want to set an alarm here, same thing. There's a, a very similar way that you can change your minutes as well as your hours on both phones and that really hasn't changed. So um, you can see a lot of similarities with the DNA of, of how these things are set up. Otherwise, both devices have great touchscreens that are very responsive. They're both capacitive screens. Obviously, the N9 has a better resolution and pixel density since it's using AMOLED as opposed to a traditional TFT LCD panel. Otherwise, since they are technically different operating systems, yeah, and there's different apps that will run on both, and um, other things such as the gallery do look slightly different, um, but icons being used to represent things like videos, if you see here. Also things for notes that you see over here. So they basically use the same uh, sense of notes, and um, although it uh, works in a slightly different fashion, a slightly different way of uh, you know keyboards, but it uh, is quite similar in the way that you have a very similar uh, you know, operating mechanism so that you can enter notes. It's very simple. I can exit out of this and there's not much else that you can do with a specific app. So even how that part was conceived is quite similar. Although on the Asha OS, sometimes even below the keyboard, there's another drag down, drag up drawer that it gives you additional settings to things like spell check, prediction, uh, changing the, the keyboard languages, which you have to dig a little deeper on Miko through the settings to quickly access that. So anyways, this has been a closer look at uh, two you know, very beautiful operating systems, the Asha OS and the Migo OS. Both devices are, in my opinion, very uh, beautiful gesture-based uh, mobile OSs that are very different from Android and iOS. They work well, they were ahead of its time back when the Migo was released, and uh, even today I love how Asha is you know, so simple, um, but it's a very affordable OS that's placed on lower and budget-oriented smartphones produced by Nokia. So anyways guys, thanks for watching this video comparison between the OS of Asha and Migo here at OS Review.